But connecting with God is so important and so powerful. And I believe that something has been lost as, as the generations, as we move from the early days of the charismatic move, we have lost a little bit of why we do what we do. And so we've come back to the very basics and the very foundations again and said we worship. Worship and coming and singing is not about singing songs. It's about coming and the presence of God and meeting with Him. And when we come around the Word, it's about allowing the Word of God to get on the inside of us. I was meditating on this yesterday. One of the first scriptures that I ever got given was, I am born again of the incorruptible seed of the Word of God, which is the Bible. That seed got on the inside of me when I got saved. And it's incorruptible. It never corrodes. And it also says the kingdom is like a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds. But all you need is the tiny seed on the inside of you for it to continue to germinate and it births something on the inside of us. It is incorruptible. It never goes away. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger as we grow. And so, you know, that seed, powerful thing. And so I want to talk to you today about the presence of God. Because we forgot, I do believe, a little of why we do what we do. And we're here for him to come. And I trust that not only it's very important, I believe, to come corporately for his presence, but it's also very important for us individually and to come one by one and to worship. But that's not where I wanted to start. Let's crash that. Another woman had an addiction to shopping. Yet one. How can it be? 
be the body of Christ. There's so many facets to it, but he says, I will have my bride. Yeah. And God is bringing his church to a place of balance. Yeah. And I believe a lot of these things, people become addicted because they are looking for a way to escape, looking for some answer to life. And hopefully, you and I know the answer. Turn with me to Psalm 31. It's a fantastic psalm. I never preached on the whole psalm today, but maybe another day. It really shows wonderful examples of Jesus Christ and what he went through and at the cross. And so if you ever feel that God is abandoning you, just read this one. Because Jesus was abandoned at the cross by his Father. And yet, he could see that even in the midst of his affliction, that his father had not abandoned him and would see him through. If only we could really get a hold of that for our own life. No matter what we go through, Jesus Christ is there for us because he has already gone through it. And he will see us through. No matter how hard or how tough your life is, how much you felt driven to take on something to ease the Verse 19 says this, Oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you. Isn't that awesome? God has laid up his goodness for you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. You shall hide them in the secret place of your presence. From the plots of man, you shall keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. What a fantastic scripture is that one. Look, for the Christian, our answer is
presence of God is a
I don't know about what I can do today. All I want to do is make you hungry. Really, really hungry. <laughs> really hungry. And I'm not talking about the casserole that's in the crock pot at home. As mine is, bubbling away. That's lovely this morning. But you know, I want to make you hungry for the presence of God. Why? Because in the presence of God, His power is. In the presence of God, we can touch Him. And you can receive what you need, which is me getting ahead of myself a little bit more. So what is the solution? See, we... See, the presence of God, we can have every day. And we should have every day. I remember when I first got saved, there's a way into the presence of God. Now, people think that you can come into God's presence any way you like, but you actually can't. And a lot of young ones today have said to me, oh, but that's Old Testament. The Old Testament is just that picture book for the New Testament, and actually it is a pattern for us to follow it. It's still a pattern. The priesthood, all the priesthood things that are, that are painted for us there are patterns for us to model our lives on now. And so when you come into the presence of God, David was a great psalmist. David loved the presence of God. He says, oh, take not your Holy Spirit from me. I remember Catherine Kuhlman actually saying that. And they'd say in the back room when she would be praying. Remember, many of you heard of Catherine Kuhlman? They'd say when she was praying in the back room, she would be crying and tears would be pouring down her cheek and she would be saying, oh, Holy Spirit, do it, stay with me. And she would cry and say, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Stay with me, Lord. There was such a desperation for the presence of God in her life. And of course, if we have that, we have everything. So when we come into his presence, there's some things that I believe that we need, or even day by day, I think we need to come to God honestly and in truth, in honesty and in truth, and seek his face. Acts 3, verse 19 says this. It says, Repent, therefore, be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. So the times of refreshing may come from where? Get back. 
back into his presence. Yeah. Friend, I'm telling you this, not as a pastor, but I believe prophetically God's bringing this, this church, but the church in general, to a place of balance and union with his spirit. And he says, this is the day to take it seriously. This is the day to start to seek his presence. In his presence is his power. In his presence is everything you need. You do not need to seek things, panaceas for life, outside of his presence. It is in him. And he says, repent. The times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. Why do people walk around so burdened? Because they are unrepentant and carrying their sin. Jesus is our burden bearer. And he says, come to me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come and confess your sins to me, and I will take it. I will carry it for you. You can be free. And the refreshing will come. How does it happen? It comes as you come into the presence of the Lord. Richard, I'd like you to jump on your guitar right now and just start to play a chord of Richard. I want the worship. I want the presence of God. I want us to understand in his presence, he comes. And we can just give him our burdens and just shed it. We don't have to walk around. We don't have to take on Say, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I have to escape. I have to get away. I, I can't cope with life. He is your life. Amen. Find his presence. In your own home, find that place of his presence. And you will not be addicted to anything else except him. You don't have to be. I found that when you start to worship him, he comes. And the Holy Ghost is to us. Let me tell you who he is. Because the light of the candlestick in the holy place, he is light, he is wisdom, he is understanding, he is the spirit of wisdom, he is the spirit of counsel, he is the spirit of might, he is the spirit of the fear of the Lord, and he is the spirit of holiness. And as we see him, he comes and his light starts to shine on your life. And he says, what about that? And we go, and God comes and we can say, Lord, you know, it's very easy. Repentance is not a hard thing. It's just that I'm, I'm sorry, Lord. I, every day I try to get up and say, Lord, I evict the world and demons out of my life by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Don't offend me. And I walk free by the blood of Jesus Christ every day. And when I'm sitting in his presence, God shows sometimes something and you go, oh, I haven't thought about that. I was out at a wedding yesterday and I said something and I got the Holy Ghost say to me, I'm not quite what you should have said. And you may just say, Lord, I'm so sorry. Keep short accounts with him. But you do that in his presence. And then you walk out and you feel, oh, you might have a million little children under your feet. But I tell you what, the secret place of his presence is the place to escape to because that's where the refreshing is. That's where you can walk out and you go, I can face another day. It's from that place you can face another day. From that place. Come into the place, the presence of God, honestly and in truth. Do what's right. Seek his face. When you walk in that place, really what you're doing is you start to walk in revelation knowledge. And the Holy Ghost will start to tell you and he'll start to say, mm, not the right way. No, shouldn't be doing that. You see, I can tell you that it's, it's a rule. It's a law. I can't tell you how to live. I can point the way for you. I can say, this is what I do. But you see, really in the end, the Holy Ghost has got to point it to you. He's got to say, that's not right for you. And he's the one that's got to say, no, your life is out of balance in that area. You need to give that up and start doing this. When the Holy Ghost does it, then he starts to bring your life into balance and into union with his spirit. That's where the power of God starts to flow in your life. That's where the joy of the Holy Ghost starts to come. And you're changed. And you're changed. Have a good day.